This presentation is a part of Audio Adventure Theater. It all started when I arrived in America, the land of cowboys and Indians. Little did I know that the Chicago underworld was taking a deep interest in my arrival. So far, so good. He was so busy the phone, he didn't hear me coming in. But soon, I discovered that one man in particular was out to get me, named Bobby Smiles. Alcatraz, go right back where you came from. You used the wrong gas. Go and fish him off. I followed him to Redskin City. Then somehow, I was misidentified as a man who had held up a bank. You protest? Huh, what about the Old West Bank and the loot? It was quite an adventure, but I finally managed to catch the gangster by his heels and send him off to Sing Sing. Chin Chin! Ah. Huh? Nice shooting, eh, Mr. Smiles? <sighs> CTD Productions presents to you Tintin in America, Part 2, based on the comic book by Hergé, starring Caleb Thiessen as Tintin and Snowy. Well, here I am, Snowy. I'm back from helping the police with the paperwork on Bobby Smiles' arrest. I... Snowy? Snowy? Where are you? Huh? A note stuck to the chair with a knife! If you want to see your dog again, alive, the price is $50,000 if you agree, put a white handkerchief in your window. Otherwise... Ugh. Hello! Hello! Reception? This is Tintin. My dog's been kidnapped. Yes, Snowy! Don't let anyone leave the hotel. What? Your house detective? Good. What can I do? What can I do? If I refuse, Snowy dies. But given to threats, never. So what can I do? What? What? Come in. You're Tintin. Okay. Someone took your dog? Ransom. You're stuck, huh? Right, ain't I? Good. See, nobody can fool me for one instant. No siree. Let me introduce myself. Mike McAdam, hotel detective. H how do you do? Mind if I begin detecting? Right, here's the picture. Your dog's asleep. Someone comes in, chloroforms the pooch, puts him in a sack. The kidnapper is... 33 years and 6 weeks old, speaks English with an Eskimo accent, smokes paper dollar cigarettes, wears an undershirt and has matching garters, easily identifiable by the tattoo mark on his left shoulder blade. The kidnapper has a slight limp with the right foot, cut himself trimming a corn the day before yesterday. And one more detail, Snow is in his sleep. When I tell you, sir, his grandfather was scalped by the Sioux 40 years ago, and he has a profound dislike for bird nest soup with sauce tartare, you know everything I've spotted from a quick look around. Huh? I'll be back within the hour, with your dog, of course. Huh. What powers of deduction. And what assurance. A real Sherlock Holmes. Honestly, I really didn't think detectives like that existed, except in books. Come in! Hey, presto! Your dog! What? Monster! You! You! You stole my little Fritzy! Ow! Oh, uh, take that! Uh, Come along, Fritzy! Ouch! The good lady certainly didn't spare the rod. The good lady? What's this all about a good lady? The attacker, sir, hit me over the head with a Javanese club. It was a man. 22 years old with two back teeth missing, wears rubber-soled shoes and is a regular reader of the Saturday Evening Post. You're sure? Sure, I'm sure. This time he won't escape me. You'll have your dog back within the hour. Uh, thank you very much, but we've already spent enough time getting nowhere. I think I'll continue the case myself. Chicago Tribune! New York Herald! 
Daily news! Yeah, aha. Uh -huh. The white handkerchief in the window. He's gonna pay up. Ah, uh, hey kid! Yes, sir? Give me a Tribune, a Times, a Herald, a News, and a Globe. It's a lot! Certainly. Thanks, kid. Still nothing in the papers. That's good. Means he hasn't called in the cops. That must be one of the kidnappers. I'm going to follow him. The man went into that estate. This must be the place where they're holding poor Snowy a prisoner. But how to get in? That's the problem. So you got away scot-free after your third job. That's great. Great. Now, listen to this. I'm planning that we turn our little venture into a regular business operation. Everything legit. We'll advertise. Something like, need a snatch? Call the experts. Kidnap Incorporated. Speedy, discreet, and our victims never talk. Guaranteed. Town and country service. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me while I fetch you the bylaws of our future corporation. Ow! Sounds as if he fell. Quick! Huh? He's just lying there. No one's here except for that suit of armor. Huh, Bugsy? Hey, Bugsy, wake up! Ow! Yeah, good work. Phew, I was beginning to cook inside this suit of armor. Now they're safely out of the way, all I have to do is find Snowy. And then these kidnappers are going to be spending a little time in the pokey. Number one reporter Tintin triumphs again with a gang of dangerous crooks handed over to the police. A kidnapped syndicate busted by the young sleuth. The cops also netted an important haul of confidential files. And so I raise my glass to our young and I must say, these hero. official dinners are a, a bit of a bore. And to crown it all, I, I've got hiccups. In a matter of weeks, has struck terror into the heart of every gangster. <laughs> You may be certain, ladies and gentlemen, that I shall take away unforgettable memories of my short stay in America. With a full heart, I say to you... What is the light going out? Help! 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 Oh, goodness gracious, what's happening? No need to panic! No need to panic! Keep calm, please! I'm sure it's nothing more than a blown fuse. It is unbelievable, gentlemen. Tintin has vanished. <gasps> How disgraceful. I must ring up the police. Hello? Hello? Police? Tintin has been kidnapped. Please send your best detective right away. Hello, my name is Mike McAdam. I'm the detective you sent for. Thank you for coming so quickly. This is what happened. Tindon, our guest of honor. Okay, okay. I already recognized his dog. So, uh, what about my payment? Oh, of course. Here you are. Thanks. Bring him back safe and sound, and there's another $5,000 for you. Within the hour, with the aid of his dog, I'll rescue Tintin and catch the crooks. Snowy, you go with this gentleman, all right? All right.
right, but I don't much like the look of him. So long. See you in an hour. <laughs> you know something? It gives me the creeps out here in the dark. What a huge park. Maybe I should... Funny smell. Come on, Mac. Pull yourself together. This is no time. Hey! Ow! Snowy, I must say, I never thought I'd ever see you again. Tintin! Tintin! Look out! Someone's coming! <laughs> Hi. How are you doing, Mr. Tintin? Why are you doing this? Why? I think that should be obvious. In a matter of weeks, you have put behind bars some of the most influential gangsters in this city. Our whole profession is now on the verge of ruin. Thanks to you. I'm sorry, but as a member of the Central Syndicate of Chicago Gangsters, I cannot allow this to go on any longer. That is why I have had you brought to our headquarters here. What are you going to do? My clever little friend, I've got a surprise for you. I'm going to clamp this little dumbbell to your leg. Of course, it won't be all that easy to walk dragging this behind you. But then, <laughs> you won't need to walk. <laughs> no! You need to swim. Yeah! <laughs> Great joke, huh? See this trap door? Down there. That's Lake Michigan. Get it? <laughs> really great joke. 40 feet to the bottom, and we're going to see if you can swim to the surface. You, and your dumbbell, of course. As for that mangy little mutt, he can go with you. Maybe he can give you a hand. <laughs> Stand up. Goodbye, Snowy. I won't ever leave you, Tintin. All right. Happy landings. Whoa! Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and pleasure to present the strongest man in the world, I give you the great Bolivar. Before your very eyes, he will perform amazing feats of strength. The single-handed snatch, the specialty of the great Bolivar. The lift when they laugh. <laughs> right, Mr. Bolivar? Huh? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
We're going home at last. <laughs> In Tintin in America by Erge, dramatized for audio by Caleb Tyson. You heard Caleb Tyson as Tintin and Snowy, Xander Hartman as Mike McAdam, Josiah Coates as Bugsy, Richard Nelson as the dinner host, Jacob Banks as Billy Bolivar, and Chris Brown as the boss. Other parts were played by Philip Tyson, Ryan Fleming, Kristen Santiago, Jonah Connor, Zoe Corianitis. Ryan Ogle, Jamil Haddad, Connor McCauley, and Diego Miranda. Sound design and mix was by Caleb Tyson. The audio adventure theater theme was composed by Garrett Vandenberg, and I'm Cody Robbins. Ten Ten in America by Erge was brought to you by CTD Productions. Next time. This is the life, Snowy. A really quiet holiday for a change. My magnificent papyrus, the key to the lost tomb of Pharaoh Kiosk. Scores of Egyptologists have tried to find the spot. Every single one has vanished. Ruff, look at that, Tintin. Huh? A cigar out here? How peculiar. Tintin! You heard that, Snowy? We're trapped in the tomb. And get a move on. The boss is worried about the coast guards. By George, I believe I've seen you somewhere before, young man. Be sure to check out our website at audioadventuretheater.blogspot.com.